Hi everyone, my name is Chris Lawrence and I'm the Managing Director of One Training. Thank you so much for jumping on and taking a look at some information about One Training, who we are and some of our fitness traineeship opportunities. Just going to start by just giving a bit of background about One Training, the journey where we've started from to give you a bit of context as, as to why and how we deliver some of our courses and then we'll go into some of the detail about the school-based fitness traineeship. So at One Training, we're all about empowering our community to reach new heights through our tailored approach to learning. But when it comes down to it, everything we do is about building confidence through education. Now, I'll share in a second a bit of the journey of myself and my business partner, Leo and Keir, uh, as to how we started uh, One Training from our first business, One Wellbeing. But everything came about through building confidence because when we have confidence in life, we can take that next steps into employment, into education, into our personal life. You know, confidence gives that us the ability to take those next steps. So. Everything we do and all the delivery models, everything we do with our courses is about building confidence in learning. So we first started Leon and I with a company, One Wellbeing. We started in 2012 and it was all about providing a learning support network for athlete. I was very fortunate enough to play 15 years of professional sport for, for the West Tigers, um, played uh, local and uh, junior football and with Leon Key, my business partner, he also went to St. Greg's with me, um, went to school together, both aspiring to be young athletes, both went on our different paths, but we both had failed attempts at university. Um, at that point in time, the structure of university, the structure of uh, different RTOs and um, different TAFEs didn't really suit the needs of athletes. So for us, we wanted to create a learning model that was suited specifically for athletes because we saw so many athletes disengage with school at such a young age, focus solely on sport and have low confidence in learning, low language literacy and numeracy skills, and were unsure of what they wanted to do. So. We wanted to build their confidence in learning by delivering a fitness course. We partnered with an RTO to deliver a certificate three and four in fitness. And the reason we chose the certificate three and four in fitness wasn't that we necessarily thought every single athlete would end up in to that industry post their career, but we knew that was a really good transitional skills. We knew uh, athletes knew a lot about fitness. And for those who had low confidence in learning, low confidence in their own skills, this is a great way because they knew fitness that they could build their own confidence to take that next step in that journey. For me, that's how I did it. I had a failed attempt at uni because I really just couldn't fit the structure in with professional sport. I then went in my fitness course and building the learning skills that I really enjoyed and then applied uh, in the setting of football really helped to build my confidence and then take that next step and went back to uni. Went in a different field, went and did a business degree, but that allowed me to then help build and start this business. So over 12 years, we've delivered that 1,400 athletes through our courses. Through that time, um, we wanted to understand more about how we can deliver education. In 2016, uh, we conducted a research report to understand more about how we can, again, best suit the needs of athletes. We ended up partnering with Western Sydney University to have our findings academically published in the International Journal of Sport and Society uh, called Empowering Elite Athlete Education. But what that did, that gave us a learning model we knew could engage with students who had low confidence in their own learning ability, were unsure of what they wanted to do. Some might have had low language literacy and numeracy skills, but essentially for those who just want to dip their toe in the water, how can we really build confidence and get engagement for them to take that next step? So from that, we we're able to start one training. One training is our RTO arm of the business. And from that, we've been able to not only help and uh, athletes who have been able to move on and help those who are leaving school, those who are upskilling in workplaces, and in particular helping disadvantaged job seekers um, build the skills to get back into employment. So um, that's where the RTO has got to now. Now we've got the fantastic opportunity to be able to work within schools, implementing that same model we know has worked um, for those students who don't fit in necessarily into the standard box of education of university or TAFE or standard employment. For us at One Training, it's about unique tailored learning and how we can really identify the needs of the specific group. So just to share a couple of the past wins that we've had from One More Being and One Training over the last little bit, as I mentioned, we've worked with professional athletes now for the last 12 years. Over that period, 1,400 athletes through the Certificate 3 Forum and Forum Fitness and some of our short discovery courses, which are all, bit, all, um, all about building those first skills and confidence before in entering into a formal education course. In the employment skills space, we're partnering with the Collingwood Magpies uh, and to be able to do that, um, we've been able to put uh, 93 participants um, through a, a pre-employment program, disadvantaged job seekers in their region, 
a targeted program to help connect the community and then place uh, these participants into work. We also work very closely on a project with the Melbourne Victory. The Melbourne Victory uh, provide asylum for the Afghan women's national football team when they fled Afghanistan. Uh, and they approached us about obviously our work with athletes and engaging this cohort to get them job ready in, into the Australian workforce. Very fortunate to work, work with these girls. We had 16 participants commence the program, had 10 complete, not that 10, we had eight in, straight into work and two into further study, which is great. Uh, and in particular over in the fitness industry, you know, we've been able to re be really fortunate enough to um, work in the industry because of our work with athletes for so many years, um, focusing initially just on uh, the Stipka 3 and 4 in fitness, branching out into other areas. Over the last 12 months, we've been really able to build a partnership and a network with a lot of gym and their state gyms and their stakeholders. And here's just a bit of an example about some of the types of courses and programs we've been able to run for these stakeholders uh, in gyms over the last 12 months. 38 through a customer engagement course, 30 through, through fitness courses, six through leadership and management courses, and two in a marketing and communication courses. So now a bit about where we've started and how we do education. Now let's talk about the SBAT. So what is an SBAT? It's a school-based apprenticeship and traineeship. And what that means is that um, as part of the schooling, so in year 10, 11, 12, high school students can commence a vocational training course um, as part of a traineeship and complete it while at school. So for it to be an apprenticeship or traineeship, you have to conduct the training, which is completing the course, obviously the school and employment outside of the school. Um, and this will go towards your HSC. So the qualification in this case, we're talking about the certificate three in fitness will be um, point and credit points and units towards your HSC. It won't be towards an ATAR, but it will go towards your HSC. Now, um, for us at One Training, um, we will start running this of the year 11 year of school. So for those year 10 students that um, are looking at the subjects for year 11 and 12, um, they have the option to do that with us. We will start in term one. We'll talk about uh, the details in a second, but one of the great benefits of this straight off the bat, and I've already got so much um, feedback and questions, uh, particularly from a lot of parents, um, a lot of parents, a lot of school advisors, a lot of students, um, is about the awareness of this and um, obviously wanting to potentially get an ATAR to go to university. As someone who, was, you know, I really enjoyed school. I, I you know, worked really hard at school, got a really good ATAR and went into university. The opportunity to have something like this in reflection probably would have been the better pathway. And here's why, if you're a student or, you know, a, if you have a um, son or daughter or someone at your school that is interested in, in health and fitness or exercise science space and might be looking at uh, university in that space, this is actually a probably better pathway to do. And the reason for it is that you can get a qualification as soon as you finish year 12. So you come out finishing year, term three of year 12, once all the um, work's been completed and everything's been signed off, with the certificate three in fitness, what that can do, you can walk straight into the fitness industry and start earning anywhere from 35 to $55 an hour because there's such a demand in this industry. Now, what's, yes, that means you can't go into university that first year. However, if you then went on to do your certificate four in that first year out of school, you can then look at alternate pathways in the university in that second or third year out of school. Now, the reason that might be beneficial is that because you can start working in the industry, gaining valuable experience, and then taking that knowledge when you start to apply that for a university degree. We've had so many second and third year exercise science, health science, um, human movement students come back to us and do their certificate three because whilst they're doing the university degree, they're still trying to find some work and they're working in hospitality or these jobs, and they realise they would rather be working in the industry gaining any knowledge, but they can't do that until they have their certificate three. So we'll go into a bit more details in a second, but it's very, um, the opportunities for these school-based traineeships uh, are quite um, enormous. So this is all funded through, um, or subsidised, should I say, through Smart and Skilled funding. So Smart and Skilled is a New South Wales government program that helps people get qualifications uh, through in-demand skills and, and through fee-free training. So one hour certificate uh, three in fitness uh, is being delivered as an SBAT, so school-based apprenticeship and traineeship under Smart and Skill funding, and it is fully subsidized for students. So um, guys, there is no cost for the students. This is fully subsidized. Um, and there's no, if students start and then finish and, and realize we don't have to, um, they uh, don't 
like this industry or it's not for them that and they drop out they don't have to pay any money back how it is based on milestones for us as the rto we are subsidized based on milestones so there is no um, cost for the participants so fitness traineeships through our Civic 3 in fitness is a blended version of online and face-to-face -face learning to provide an engaging and flexible learning environment environment where students can, um, can learn from some of the industry's best um, on their way to accelerate themselves in the fitness industry. Okay, so this is for those who are looking to excel uh, in and have a career in the fitness industry by combining the vocational training element with a career. Here's just a sample of some of the past students that, that have gone through our course. Again, we have, have had a lot of work um, with athletes. We understand the needs and challenges. If there are any aspiring athletes or you just have an interest in sport and fitness, um, we really um, tailor that um, to your needs. We try to make it and contextualize the course to obviously provide all the different pathways and understanding the needs and challenges. But here's just a bit of a snapshot of some of our past students. So what are the details of the traineeship of the certificate three in fitness? So there has to be 300 hours of learning. How that's broken up. All of our the theory sessions are run online via Zoom. Okay, so that will start in term one of year 11 and go all the way through to term three of year 12. So across the seven terms. Now, um, there will be Zoom sessions each and every week. There'll be two two hour Zoom sessions each week. So you're required to do four, hour, four hours of learning each and every week. Now that time will be decided closer to the date. We'll get feedback from everyone who enrolls about the best set, set times. We'll have various times that um, different students can pick and, and we'll try to get the most suitable time. If students cannot make the session, that is okay. Everything is recorded. We're setting it up like it's a self-paced course, like you can do it as an independent learning course. So you have all the resource if you have to miss a session, if there's something at the school that pops up, if there's, um, you know, uh, if you're sick for some reason and you can't go. So the second part is the employment. You have to do 100 days of paid employment between the year 11 and year 12 years. So one day of paid employment is considered seven hours. So essentially it's 700 hours, okay? So we, you do not have to do the whole um, 100 days in a set amount of time. It has to be done by the end of the traineeship and it doesn't have to be seven hours a day. You can take a day off school and that as part of the traineeship requirements is possible. Um, or you can split up that time and maybe have that seven hours each week as uh, two, three hours and a one hour or do more on a weekend. It doesn't matter how it's split up. That's something that has to be arranged with the, um, with the employer. Given the fitness industry, there is a demand for um, hours both before and after school. So there will be the ability for a lot of employers to be able to do those times so it won't impact your schooling. The other thing you do is 70, uh, 70 hours of work placement. So um, the work placement is done during the uh, employment time. That's where a trainer and assessor of one training will come out uh, and assess you based on all the competencies of the units that you'll go through. So all the theory you learn, all the performance knowledge you'll do, you'll perform in an actual setting and you'll be ticked out and that 70 hours will be done through the, the paid employment hours. Now, obviously you're getting employed, so you are getting paid, okay? So it is a traineeship wage and that varies anywhere between 950 to 1450 per hour and even more for public holidays. So depending on the hours, depending on the days and the arrangements of the employer, uh, but you obviously are paid uh, whilst you're doing um, uh, your work and whilst you're at school because you're being employed uh, by a gym or sporty organisation. So what are the benefits for enrolling in a traineeship? Now, first of all, career head start. As I spoke about before, you come out of your year 12 year with a certificate three in fitness. There is such a high demand for group instructors. So the Cert 3 is the entry level qualification you need to go in and start delivering group um, instruction classes or group exercise classes. There's such a high demand in the industry at in the moment. And the reason for this is during COVID, obviously so many gyms shut down and you know there was a lot of restrictions on what could be done. Those who were um, senior in the industry had been in the industry a long time, obviously stayed in the industry, those se more senior trainers. Any trainers who have just got their Cert 3 and were sort of first, second or third year, left the industry to find other work. Obviously because uh, it was unknown about when things would go back to normal. Because of that, there is such a lag and a demand for Certificate 3 qualified trainers. Every single day we have gyms contacting us, 
asking us if we have students that would like to work straight away when they finish their course. Now, being able to do this can mean because of the demand, you can walk straight into a job at a very highly paid job whilst you then decide what your next career is. You can decide this is going to be the stepping stone between a Cert 3 trainer and then into a Cert 4 trainer, which is a further pathway to study down um, the bottom. And you can progress your career all the way up to gym owner or franchise owner. That's just one pathway, but it gives you that head start as soon as you finish school. Hands-on experience. By having two years of working and being in the industry, you start to see a lot of things. From a fitness point of view, you start to see how um, the gym operates, you start to see how group um, and uh, exercise instruction class is delivered. You understand why, um, all the training methods, you understand how to plan uh, and prepare programs. But more importantly, you learn some of those business skills that you can take across any industry. Customer service, business development, um, operations, processes, work health and safety, all these things, doesn't matter what industry you are in, you can take them and be successful in any industry you're in, okay? Industry insights and relevant knowledge. Being in there every single week or for those minimum hours each week and really learning from some of the industry's best and these trainers, you can try to fast track your career, asking and understanding what are the trends in the industry? What are the things you've learned that you wish you knew when you were younger? You can really start the fast track. Networking opportunities. Again, you're in this gym, you're building connections and relationships with the trainers, the owners and the members. It's a great opportunity to build those connections. And if you don't end up in the industry and if it's a pathway to something else, you've got a network of people that you've built strong relationships with. Skill development, as I said, you are building skills that are transferable across many different aspects as I go over and again, customer service, business development, operations, work health and safety, you know, process, uh, system development. Personal growth, getting out of your comfort zone and actually going into a different environment, going into work, learning new people will accelerate everything you do at school. You know, that's really gonna help you grow as a person, understand what some of the industry is like, uh, understand different parts of what when, when you leave school, what everything will be like. And as I said, a further pathway to study, the option to go to insert four, and then many RTOs like ourselves have partnerships with different universities and different providers that may have a, a alternate pathway or a late entry uh, into different universities uh, courses that are associated around the exercise and health science. On our enrollment process, we want to make sure everyone that engages in this enrollment um, in a school-based traineeship really understands what the requirements are because we want to set everyone up for success, okay? So we obviously connect with a careers advisor. This video is one of the stages and providing that information to the careers advisor. Um, we will connect and provide the information to the students and the parents. Obviously, we, that, that everyone has to understand what those requirements are. Um, there may be a, a student and parent event that we will run. That will be optional for those who just want to know some um, more information and ask some questions. The same with industry workshops. We will um, uh, look at running some of those industry workshops, which will be out of gym so that students can come in and actually know what the day in the life uh, of working in a gym looks like. Okay, So understanding before you sign up, this is what I would be doing day to day. Then we do the pre-enrollment interview and screening, something we have to do as a RTO. We have to understand, uh, identify what are some of the barriers, the challenges or needs that might prevent you from the, uh, um, successfully completing the course and how can we support you with that. The employment and screening and introduction, obviously it's very important to um, you know, meet with these, these employers, um, understand what they, um, their requirements are um, and, and they're happy to take you on board. The course enrollment, Traineeship sign-up, um, that's another provider that comes in as part of a traineeship. You have to do a formal traineeship uh, contract and, and sign up for that. We'll then onboard for the course, commence the course in term one of uh, your year 11 year and, and commence your employment as well. So a lot of steps, of, uh, there are a lot of admin, but you have a lot of people there to help. Your careers advisor, us as the RTO, um, the employers, and you've got the apprenticeship network providers who are the ones doing the traineeship sign-up. Here's just some of our employment partners we've worked with so far and some of just a range of gyms that have already um, expressed interest and uh, are willing to provide job opportunities. Again, when we are not saying that these are guaranteed jobs because we still have to do that introduction with the employer and you have to, number one, 
be a good fit for them and they have to be a good fit for you, okay? If they can't be flexible and fit into your demands, it's not gonna work and vice versa, okay? So um, these are some of the gyms and facilities we've worked with so far who have already played jobs. We've got more and more. And one of the things we continually speak with the careers advisors, the students and the parents, um, with our network in our industry, if there is not an opportunity within your local area, we will assist you to go find that. That is obviously one of the biggest challenges. We want to take that workload away from you. So understanding if you are interested in the course, that's great. We'll go start the process and go start, source that job opportunity. So next steps, next steps, guys, if you are interested, uh, if you're a careers advisor, a student or a parent and would like to know more information, like, like to ask some specific questions or like to know if there is an, an event where you can attend and learn more with that, um, specifically about a traineeship or in a, in a gym, go down to the bottom of the page, fill out the form. One of our team will get in contact with you and we can start the process. This video is just to give you a bit of a brief overview. Hopefully it's got, got you started thinking and more aware about the opportunities in the fitness industry. So put your details down in the form below. One of our, our team will get in contact with you and we really hope to see you guys soon. Very exciting opportunity. Can't work wait to work with each and every one of you.